In this video I wanted to show a fun little project I threw together and to thank one of my viewers for recommending this particular detector diode to me. A couple of weeks ago I made a video where I talked about radio frequency radiation and how I thought a lot of people were becoming overly paranoid about the effects it might have on them. Well it uh, brought up a little bit of a conversation in the comment section and one of my viewers mentioned to me that I should be using a different diode in my field strength detection that it would be a lot more sensitive to the high frequencies I was trying to measure than the field strength meter I was using here. So I took his suggestion, I wanted to thank him, and uh, bought a few of these diodes here. It was a 1SS86 and I uh, built a little circuit I found on YouTube. Somebody referred to it as a lectenna. What it is, it's a like a resonant antenna at a particular frequency and, and a lot of people were demonstrating how you can hold these little, I guess you can call them dipole antennas. It's got a little LED in the center here and a diode in parallel with it, the diode mentioned here. And uh, basically it rectifies the radio frequency energy and it lights up the LED here. Well, when I saw the videos, I was thinking, well, why wouldn't this work at other frequencies too? So I built a series of resonant antennas that would respond to different frequencies. And I was surprised to see how well it worked. Um, just for the record, this uh, what you see here is uh, the wire in my hand. It's not actually hooked electrically to either of these wires here. It's wrapped around the LED. That's just so I could hold it when I demonstrate it. But I'm going to go ahead and show you what this thing will do. I've designed each one of these elements to respond to a different frequency. And so I'm going to start with the, uh, the 2.4 gigahertz LED here. I'll show you when I take my remote controller for my drone. I'm actually able to light the light by putting it near here. Now I'm also able to take my FRS radio that's on channel 2. It's about 462 megahertz. I can transmit near this antenna. You'll notice it doesn't light any of the others except for this one that it's resonant with. Or I can take my 2 meter walkie talkie here and I can transmit this one as well. That one really lights up the light. The other thing I noticed is that the uh, meter I hooked one of these things to, I took the uh, couple of alligator clips and I clipped across one of these LED diode configurations and I noticed it made an awesome uh, field strength meter. In fact, um, I'm going to set this down here. I'm going to show you how I can transmit with a walkie-talkie, for example. Let me see. It pretty much pegs the thing. It's not only sensitive to the RF coming off the walkie-talkie here, but if I turn the microwave oven on, which is probably about three and a half feet away from me here, let's see if we get a reaction. Look at that. Pegs the thing. Now, in case you're wondering if I'm standing here with the door of the microwave open, I'm not. I, I do have the door closed, but this thing is so sensitive, it's picking up the RF energy even, even though the uh, door is closed on the microwave. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and show you this here. I'm going to hold this near the microwave. And that's amazing how much RF energy is coming right through the door of that microwave there. I probably got that a good, uh, oh, I'd say an inch and a half away. When you hold it close, it gets real bright. So I didn't realize there was that much leakage from a microwave oven. So the other thing I noticed, I was able to take uh, one end of the... Uh, LEDs here. Let me see, what did I do with it? I've got one here that's hooked to my long wire antenna. Let me dim the light here so you can see this. This one here is hooked up to a long wire antenna, so me, just by me touching the other end here, I'm able to light this thing up. And right now the radio stations turned down their power pretty low, so it's amazing I'm still able to get enough RF out of this thing to light this LED. So, uh, didn't Realize I didn't need the crystal radio like I showed in a previous video to light this LED. All I need is a little configuration here. Now one thing I was going to say, if you decide to try building one of these things, make sure that you get the diode that has the H marked on it. Apparently, uh, according to one forum I was reading, not all these diodes were the same. This particular diode uh, is known to have an H on it if it's made by Hitachi, and that's supposed to be the, the correct one. And that is the correct number for it there. I found a few of them on eBay and they seem to work just fine. Also, if you're going to build one, make sure you observe the polarity when you build it. This diode here has to be configured the way this is. You might notice the plus and the minus on the LED and the direction of the diode. That's very important. If you do it backwards, it's not going to work. 
So one other thing I noticed was that the uh, Google Google Assistant I've got here, oops, I noticed it responds with these two little things I've got in here as well because it's got, uh, well, it puts a little RF signal. Watch this. Hey, Google. Now, what I find kind of strange about this is that the uh, lights alternate. This one's actually resonant for 902 megahertz, and this one is um, resonant for, what is it, uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Now, it doesn't mean that this is transmitting 902 uh, megahertz just because this thing lights up on this side, but there it goes. Now, what would make it transmit on one side here sometimes and then sometimes on this side? Let me see if I can get it to alternate again. Hey, Google. Hey, Google. Oh, well. It's got a mind of its own. Sorry, I don't understand. I'll set that down. So, I built one of these things to be resonant at the same frequency as, as a smart meter that I've got in the back here, and I was able to watch a smart meter turn the light on whenever it transmitted, which isn't very often. It'll come on for a bleep, you know, a fraction of a second or whatever, then go off. I think they only transmit about 15 seconds, uh, what is it, 15 seconds an hour, I heard. And uh, according to what I was reading, it's only about one watt coming off the smart meter. That's why I thought a lot of people were overreacting to the uh, idea that they were going to put out harmful radiation. I'd be more concerned about the cell phone or the uh, perhaps a microwave oven than I would a smart meter. In fact, uh, like I said in the previous video, it's what they call non-ionizing radiation, so I don't think it's going to be much of a problem for most people. Um, before I shut this thing down, the other thing I was going to say is I've got one of the uh, LEDs mounted on my router. Go ahead and show you this here. You might notice I can take this one. Oh, got it turned around backwards. Let me fix that up, up here. I can take this one, put it right next to it. Oh, what happened? There we go. Get a pretty good signal off my router there too. But look at look at how quickly it dissipates. If I pull this thing away, it's out. Anyway, it was definitely a fun project. Oh, I probably should share the dimensions on the wire size if you decide to build one of these. Now, I went online and used a few of those online calculators for antenna resonance to come up with these numbers. Hopefully, I did it right. It seems to be working all right. The uh, 5.3 gigahertz would have an element that's 13.4 um, millimeters on each side. That would be from the center of the LED to the side. This one here... I chose uh, 29.7 millimeters from the center to the side. So in other words, we got 29.7 from here to here and from here to here. On this one here, that's 902 megahertz, I got about 80 millimeters from this center to the side on each side again. And this one here was about 6 inches or 152 millimeters. This one was resonant at uh, 462 megahertz or 462.5875. This one here was resonant at a ham radio frequency. <clears throat> it's about 19 inches on each side. That's 146.520. That's a common frequency the ham operators use to talk to each other locally. Anyway, for what it's worth, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe.